Hey everyone, it is Saturday morning. I have my coffee and I have a bunch of shells to share with you. Another huge shout out to all of you who have been sending me shells from all over the world. I received shells from Hawaii, from the Philippines, from Scotland, from Yucatan, from Myrtle Beach, Florida, all over the world. And I am ready to share those shells with you now. So everyone who's been sending me shells in, I am super grateful for it. And I love that I'm able to take your shells and share them with the rest of the world. So I'm going to jump right in, but we're going to do three things today. I have the trunk of shells that usually I have like a display on the top of it on my porch that you've seen before. It is my wife's great grandfather's trunk that we inherited. And it was from the early 1900s. It's really cool. It has like a lock and key. It has rivet. It's really, really cool. But I usually display my shells on the top of this trunk. And what I didn't tell you is I actually have a ton more shells inside the trunk. So today we're going to pop that open as the second thing we're going to do. We're going to go over the shells on top, then we're going to go through the shells inside. And then lastly, I have a box of shells. I kind of call it my mystery box. I have no idea what they are. So I am hoping that someone out there that is watching my videos can tell me what these shells are. So we're going to pop that box open at the end. And I am counting on your expertise to help me identify what these shells are. So just to give you an overview on what is on the table, I have a horseshoe crab here, some shells from Plum Island, this and this right here, and also this one, in addition to a stack of awesome deep sea scallops that were given to me by my friend Annabelle. Look at that maker. It is beautiful. So I have about, I want to say, a huge stack, bunches of them right here, deep sea scallop shells. In addition to underneath this horseshoe crab, I have a really nice piece of driftwood that I found this past winter that I can give you an up close view of. I have a, what I believe is a bullet from World War II. So on Plum Island, there have been a lot of World War II artifacts that have been washing up. I found this stuck to a bunch of rock and seaweed that washed up on the beach. And you can still see there's some of it here on the edge. But I believe this is a bullet from World War II. It washed up around the same time that people were finding dog tags washing up on Plum Island. So this was a really cool find that I had scored. In addition to in this little bowl down here, there are a ton of shell fossils in this bowl that we're going to go through. So there's that there. Uh, this is really cool. This was sent in to me from Sabrina. And these are, and it's really fun to say, Eocene Echinoid fossils. And these are from North Carolina. So she sent me a bunch of these. So I'll be showing you these up close and personal. In addition to a bunch of shells that were sent in from Kristen in Maryland, which is very interesting for the color. So I'm going to be showing you those in contrast to some shells that were sent to me from New Jersey that are blue. So all of the ones from Maryland are orange and the ones from New Jersey are blue. And it has to do with the minerals and what is in that area that tints the shell. So I was actually talking to a friend of mine, Christine, from Canada, and she was saying that places in Nova Scotia, the shells are tinted pink and red because they have a really high iron content there. This is a new jar of dog whelks 
that I am working on building. I have a couple other things in there, some beach vines. There's that button that I found a couple videos ago. And some baby's ears from my friend Nancy. Some shark teeth. Some shark teeth from my friend Nancy. And very cool examples of nacre that were also sent in from Kristen, which I'm going to do an entire video on nacre coming soon. Um, like I said, there's not enough time in a day for me to get all the videos that I want to make created, edited, and put out there. So I'm trying to figure out a way to become a full-time sheller and get this information out to you as quickly as possible. But working a full-time job and doing this YouTube channel can be challenging at times. But I am working hard to get these videos out to you in a timely manner. Also some sea beans that were given to me from a friend, from my friend Beth. Sea beans, and I believe these are from Florida. And a bunch of olive shells that are from Florida that I find really interesting for the different colors and the different variations. We also have a keyhole sand dollar. And I'm going to show you in comparison to the sand dollars that we find up here, the common sand dollars. And I'm going to go over the differences for you. And some people have been asking about the little doves inside. We're going to go over that as well. Some small cowrie shells, a large cowrie shell. So we have a lot of things to go over on top of this table before we even crack open this chest and get inside. So let's get started. So I am going to start with these. These are Eocene Echinoid sea biscuit fossils. These were sent in by Sabrina and she found these on Holden Beach in North Carolina. And so earlier in the year in April, Holden Beach was undergoing a beach replenishment where they were doing a ton of dredging. And when they were dredging, they were digging up these fossils. And these are between 38 and 55 million years old. When these get buried in the mud, the insides of them fill up with sand and mud, and then they end up hardening and turning into these fossils. So that is the mouth right under there. And that's usually how the sand and the mud get inside of these. And then they end up hardening. And it's almost like, it almost feels like cement. For those of you who have never felt one of these before, it feels like a hard stone cement. So again, these were found in Holden Beach in North Carolina as a result of a beach replenishment project where they were dredging. And these are actually still washing up today. People are still having fun finding these. So it was really fun opening the box and getting these from Sabrina. So thank you so much for sending these in and sharing them with everyone, Sabrina. We really, really appreciate it. But it must have been amazing and so fun to find these in person. So while we're on the topic of fossils, these are Miocene era fossils. And they date between 5 and 25 million years old. And these were found in Shell Creek, Florida. I'll give you an up close look at some of these. Brought them over to the sofa with me to mask the sun a little bit. So you can see this is the same as the fossilized sea biscuit they're completely full of what appears to be sand or mud that has solidified and hardened some very cool fossils there are a couple of places in rhode island that i actually called my sister who was closer to rhode island than i do and told her about might be doing a little bit of a fossil dig in the near future. Looks like a fossilized tulip. This is definitely a fossilized shark eye. Fossilized shark eye moon snail. Fossilized sea worms. And again, these are between 5 and 25 million years old. And they do feel very heavy like rocks. And that's because they were filled with sand and sediment. 
and they hardened and fossilized. So they feel like cement filled rocks. It's an interesting one. Fossilized olive shell. Fossilized horse conch. A lot of really good fossils that were sent in from my friend Lisa. So Lisa, thank you for sending these in. Great fossils from Shell Creek, Florida, between five and 25 million years old from the Miocene era. Fossilized murex. Really great stuff. So thanks so much for sharing these with everyone, Lisa. Those of you out there who like fossils, let me know. Because like I said, there is a fossil beach that is on my radar that my sister lives kind of close to that we can do a day trip to and dig out some fossils. So this right here is one of my favorite finds. This is a message in a bottle that I did find on Plum Island. And I did, an, I did a whole video on this. So if you haven't had a chance to see that video, you can go back and watch it on my YouTube channel. So I won't go into too much detail on it. But first time I ever found a message in a bottle and I was over the moon excited. So just wanted to put this in here and just let you know, there is another video on there about the message in a bottle that I did find, but this is it. So that's how I keep it and that's how I display it. So while we are on the topic of old things, this was a really interesting find. This was not sent in, but this is something that I found on Plum Island probably about a year and a half ago. And at the time I found this, a lot of people were finding things like dog tags and artifacts that were washing up from World War II. So this washed up on the beach and it was stuck to some rock and some seaweed and a big like cluster of rock and mud. And when I pulled this off, it appears to be a bullet from World War II. And I haven't had that confirmed, but from the research that I've done online, that's what it appears to be. So again, I think this is a bullet from World War II that washed up on Plum Island at the same time that other artifacts like dog tags were washing up. This is not something that was sent in. This is a Plum Island sea cabin find on Plum Island. So while we were on the fossils and old relics, I thought I would share this with you. So these top shells here, these orange ones, were sent in from my friend Kristen from Maryland. And what I find really interesting about these is that they're all tinted with this orange monochromatic look to them and i find that interesting because we've talked before about how shells pick up their color from their environment and what they eat and the type of minerals that are in the sand and mud from which they live so that pile right here this is from kristen in maryland and then these base scallops and oyster shells are from my friend Kim in New Jersey. So you can see how my friend Kim's are all tinted blue and Kristen's are all tinted orange. So again, that has to do with the environment and what is in the sediment and the sand that they live in. So I thought this was a really great way to show you how some shells are tinted or have more of a monochromatic look depending on the area of which they're found in. So I have a friend that is in Canada and she said a lot of parts of Nova Scotia have red or pink sand and a lot of their shells are tinted pink. So someday when I hope to get to Canada, someday I hope to get to Canada or Nova Scotia and we can make a third pile here of pinkish red shells. But I thought that was a really good way to show this. I 
Okay. So these beauties here, these are San Diego Mexican flat scallop shells. I think I have that right. San Diego Mexican flat scallop shells. These were sent to me by my friend Tina, who watches this channel. So Tina, thank you so much for sending these in. Along with this shell right here is, I think, a land snail. But I am not sure what kind of land snail. So if you know what the shell is, put it in the comments. But it definitely feels like a land snail shell. And why I say that is if you've ever felt an apple snail or a ram's horn shell, they're land snails and it has that same thin, it's like a very thin, lightweight shell. And it has that same feeling as the apple snail shell and the ram's horn. So again, I think this is some kind of freshwater land snail. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. Also sent in by Tina. Thank you. What else do we have in here? This is a harp shell. And I'll put the full name of it up on the screen. But this was also sent in by my friend Tina. Um, this shell comes from Hawaii and it was not part of her personal collection, but is a part, but it is actually now part of her personal collection because she purchased a full shell collection from someone that took a lifetime to collect all the shells she has from all of their world travels. So she just purchased this and a bunch of other shells from someone's personal collection. So again, this is a harp shell and it is from Hawaii. And interesting thing about these, these are deep water shells so they are not intertidal. They do not have an operculum like our moon snails and some of the whelks that are here that are intertidal. But they do bury themselves with their spikes facing up for protection. So our moon snails here and our whelks all have an operculum to hold in moisture to wait out the tides. Um, and in addition, that operculum closes and adds as another layer of protection against predators these shells these harp shells do not have an operculum they are not intertidal they do not have to hold in moisture to wait out the tides look at how beautiful that is with those ribs and those designs and patterns this is definitely a favorite shell of mine so thank you so much tina for sending this to me oh this is fun this is a nutmeg let me pause this, take it out of the bag, and we'll talk about it in just a second. Okay, I'm back. So this is a nutmeg, and Tina said this is her favorite shell. So this has like a lattice work finish on it because it has both vertical and horizontal ribbing on it, which creates that nice lattice work finish. And it is brown and yellow or off-white. But again, this is a nutmeg shell. They're found in the Atlantic Ocean from North Carolina all the way to Brazil. And again, it's a deep water shell, so it does not have an operculum, just like the harp shell, this one here. So this one does not have an operculum, and this one, this nutmeg, does not have an operculum because they're deep water. They don't need to close and hold in moisture to wait out the tides. These grow to be about two and a half inches. And it's a beautiful shell. So again, this is Tina's favorite shell. Thank you, Tina, for sending that in. And this one here, this should be at the end with my other ones. I am not sure what this is. It actually reminds me of some kind of a, an olive shell. I think it's a volute shell. But I am not entirely sure about this one. But this was also sent in by Tina. So Tina, thank you so much. There is this shell that you sent in, which is gorgeous. Just not sure what it is. Then there is the land snail shell, 
not sure what the name of this is. If you know, please put it in the comments. We have the nutmeg, the harp shell from Hawaii, and the, the San Diego Mexican flat scallop shells. So thank you so much, Tina, for sharing that with everyone. Really appreciate it. These are some olive shells from my friend Lisa in a common walk. So that doesn't belong in there. But these are some olive shells from my friend Lisa. I believe she got these in Florida. But it's a really cool example of like why I love shelling so much. So this is the same type of shell but there are so many different colors and patterns that you can find. So those are just really gorgeous and I wanted to share them with everyone. So thank you so much, Lisa, for sending these in. They're really beautiful. Really gorgeous olive shells. There's some really cool cowrie shells. nice cowrie shell. I think this is from the Philippines. I could be wrong about that, but um, I'm going to research that after. But it's a beautiful cowrie shell. And there are a bunch of little baby cowrie shells here. But what's really interesting about the cowrie shells, they fully encompass their shell. So they have like these little scrub brushy things that scrub the algae and all of the other elements off their shell and that's why their shells are so glossy because they're constantly being scrubbed and polished so those are cowrie shells so there are little cowrie shells here and a bigger cowrie here these shells were sent in to me by a few different people. These are baby ear shells and they are part of the moon snail family. So the northern moons that we find, the shark eye moons that we find, these are baby ear moons. So part of the moon snail family. These were found in Maryland by my friend Nancy. In addition to some shark teeth that she also found. So another fossil and we have a few more in here i don't know the types of sharks that these came from so if anybody knows definitely put it in the comments but these are fossilized shark teeth that my friend nancy found and sent in with these baby ears these are sea beans that were sent in by my friend beth and her sister from Florida. Never had any sea beans before. This is the first time I was able to add these to my collection. So thank you, Beth and your sister. And these are amazing pieces and examples of Maker from Kristen. So thank you so much, Kristen, for sending these in. Um, is these I'm gonna use in an upcoming video about Naker that I haven't shot yet. So I'm gonna do an entire video on Naker, seeing as I have so many great examples of it and it is a fascinating substance. So these are really beautiful. So thank you so much, Kristen, for sending these in. I will start making that video soon, I promise, because I know you sent these in a while ago. So this is something that a bunch of people have asked me about. As another um, occupational hazard of a YouTube channel about shelling, sand everywhere, all the time. <laughs> Which I'm sure all of you have that same issue because you are all avid shellers as well. But this right here, this is a keyhole sand dollar. And it is found in the southern states. So they can be found in Georgia, they can be found in Florida, um, the southern part of the East Coast, as well as other places. These are the common sand dollars that we have here on Plum Island. 
And a lot of people have been asking about these because I think a lot of shellers are used to seeing this kind, but are not used to seeing this kind. So these are these holes right here, the keyholes in these sand dollars, and they help the sand dollars. So when they're in the ocean and they're being like tossed around by the water, they allow the sand to come up through them and kind of anchor them down to the bottom. And in addition to it, it allows them to bury themselves in the sand faster. So it helps them survive having those keyholes in them. These that we have up here do not have any of those keyholes. And some people have been asking if the ones that we have up here have the doves in them the same way that the keyhole sand dollars do. And the answer is yes. These sand dollars also have doves in them. And the doves, a lot of people don't know this, but the doves are actually the teeth of the sand dollar. So this is the mouth right here. And when the sand dollar takes in tiny plants or tiny animals, those teeth actually grind up the food. And they can chew their food for about 15 minutes before swallowing it. But those teeth are the doves that people refer to in the sand dollars. So I'm actually going to open this sand dollar here because it does have a bit of a break in it and show you the doves that are in these sand dollars. And you can compare them to the doves that you have in your sand dollars down south, the keyhole ones. I'm not going to open this one because I don't have a lot of these in my collection. Uh, but this one does have a little bit of a break in it. So I'm going to use it as an example for you guys. So we'll open that up. And these right here These right here are the doves that people are always asking if they are inside our sand dollars. So you can see right here, these are them. So these are the doves that are in the sand dollars here. And it looks very similar to the ones that are in the keyhole sand dollars. But again, these are teeth. These are the sand dollar teeth, and this is what they use to chew their food. Not sure a lot of people know about that. Nice little fun fact about sand dollars. Okay, now, now I get to clear all of this off so that we can turn this little key and get inside this giant chest of shells. So let's do it. Okay, we are all cleaned off. We are going to turn the key and open the chest. Ooh. It's been a while since I've been in here. Let me just give you a quick overview of what we have inside here. I put a lot of my bigger pieces in here along with a few of my sand collection bottles. Some of these we've talked about before, but some of them are new pieces. So we talked about these here, the Eocene Echinoids, fossilized sea biscuits. Here we have abalone shells. This is a green abalone. And how beautiful that is. Those holes they do use to breathe. And as they age, some of them close up and some of them get bigger. But look at all that really cool layered nacre inside, creating all of that beautiful iridescent mother of pearl. Really beautiful shell. This was sent to me by Tina, so thank you, Tina. And we talked about the fossilized sea biscuits. We talked about this keyhole limpet that was sent in by Geo, and it was from Chile. Beautiful keyhole limpet. This is a new piece of coral that was sent in from Lynn, and this is from Stockholm, Sweden. Really beautiful piece of coral. Some scallop shells from Chile. The color on these are incredible. Sea biscuit sent in from my friend Lisa. 
knobbed whelk, which I've showed you previously in another video from my, Kim, my friend Kim in New Jersey. This was a sturgeon scoot that I found in one of my videos on Plum Island. Fish vertebrae, completely sun bleached and dried out. Florida crown conch. The fossil that I found with my dad when I was little. Channeled whelk from my friend Kim in New Jersey. Lightning whelk from my friend Lynn in Sweden. So that takes care of this entire front row. And we'll start on the back row. So we're starting out with the back row, this beautiful dried sea star. I am not sure what type of sea star this is, and it was sent in with no return, with no return address. So if you sent this to me, please let me know so that I can thank you. And we can all thank you for sharing it with us. This is a surf clam that I found on Plum Island that I have showed you before. Beautiful murex sent in by Kristen. Two beautiful purple sea urchins from Chile. I believe this is a pear whelk. Some horse conchs. Another horse conch here. Another horse conch back here. Really beautiful shell. And if you haven't had a chance to look at my Southwest Florida videos that I went shelling with my family, my sister found a my sister found a huge horse conch. Um, I think it's on the thumbnail for the video if you want to see that video. That was an amazing find by her. Beautiful piece of coral from Australia, the Great Barrier Reef. This was actually gifted to me with a permit, but generally any coral or anything from the Great Barrier Reef is illegal unless you have a permit. So if you're buying shells online from anyone, please make sure they have a permit to be able to sell those to you. Beautiful piece of brain coral from Stockholm, Sweden, from my friend Lynn. Beautiful angel wing from Florida, sent in by my friend Lisa. Along with, oh, I'm very careful. Along with this jar of cone shells. You can see there's a few of those really deadly textile cones in there. And a knobbed whelk from my friend Adriana in Savannah, Georgia. This is a jar of sand that I collected on the Cape from Cornhill Beach. My goal is to get a jar of purple sand from Plum Island in the same type of jar to put this next to because I'd really like to see the contrast. It's a beautiful yellow sand. This is the contents of the inside top layers of inside the chest. I do have an entire section beneath this that I'm gonna save for another video because we need to take a break. So we will come back another day and hit the shells beneath these shells for another shell tour. So without further ado, this is the box of shells that I am hoping you all can help me with in identifying. So I'm going to take this, bring it over here, and hopefully some of you out there know what these shells are because I do not. So shell number one, I love it, but I have no idea what it is. If you know, 
please put it in the comments. Shell number one. Identification, please. Shell number two. Again, gorgeous, but I have no idea what it is. Shell number three. Very beautiful. Looks like it's worn. So maybe these knobs and everything were pronounced a bit more back in the day. Love it, but can't identify it. Cute little one here. Shell number four. Not sure what it is. So if you're going to help me identify this is shell number one. Shell number two. Shell number three. Shell number four. Shell number five. Shell number six. That's an incredible shell. I'd love to know what this is called. Shell number six. I think I'm going to call these both shell number seven because I feel like they're the same shell. Maybe. Shell number seven. And there is a fossil here that I'm not sure what it is. So we'll call this number eight. So please let me know in the comments if you know what any of these are. And I thank you for your help. So one more quick shout out and thank you to Joyce, her husband, and her two grandkids, Charlie and George, who sent me sea glass that they tumbled themselves from their personal collection. So I'll pull these off in just a second to give you a good look at them. But they take glass and they have a tumbler. They tumble it themselves and they sent me beautiful pieces from their own collection. So let me show you what these look like. So here they are up close. These are absolutely beautiful pieces of sea glass. Joyce, tell Charlie and George, I thank them so much. These are gorgeous. They did such a beautiful job. And I love that they love shells and sea glass as much as I do. So thank you so much for sending these in. They're beautiful and I am going to cherish them. So thank you so much for shelling with me today. We have a brand new shell adventure, a new beach hunt coming next week. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you next time we hit the beach. Bye.